Well, good morning, everybody. Today, we're out rock hounding with Eric, and we are in Gold Hill, Utah, which is about a 40-minute drive south of Wendover, and we are going to go up there and look for some minerals. Gold Hill is an unincorporated community in western Tooele County, Utah. Named after a gold-bearing mountain just east of town, it was the center of a mining district that was active in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Over 80 different minerals can be found here, some that are found nowhere else in the world, but it was gold, copper, arsenic, silver, lead, and tungsten that were found in commercially viable quantities. Gold was first discovered at Gold Hill in 1858 when California-bound immigrants traveled through the area, but it was rock samples rich in galena, the natural mineral form of lead, that attracted the attention of travelers who stayed to prospect for minerals. Settlement only began in 1871 when a smelter was built, and the town itself wasn't officially established until 1892. But Gold Hill would experience several boom and bust cycles during its existence. All right, so here's a piece. This is calcite with some chrysocolla on it. And if you flip it over, this is really cool. You've got a big old piece of pyrite in there. Pretty attractive little piece. Yeah, some druzy, you know, normally I'd say quartz, but here I don't know because there's so many other things. That I, don't, I don't know if it's actually quartz, but. And then the green, boy, I don't know. Normally you'd say malachite, but that, I don't think that's malachite here. This is more of like that Kona calcite or, boy, I don't know. There was like five different minerals that were green that kind of look similar uh -huh. to this. So it makes identification a little difficult. Yeah, quite a variety of stuff in these rocks. Yeah. Another thing that tells you you're at a good location when you're searching on mine dat, you know, and you see a mine like this, this was actually broken down into a whole bunch of different like sub levels of, wow. of what's at the mine. So yeah. there were things labeled like middle pit, south pit, and then all of these different locations within the mine, like the specific uh, at it or the specific site, because you've got a pit here, but then you've got all these different workings everywhere else. And those are kind of categorized and listed on mine dat. You don't see that level of detail put into, um, you know, a mine dat listing uh, for a mine that, you know, isn't really a big producer. Boy, there must have been something really interesting going on geologically underground, you know, this many minerals to be found in one location because it's not normal and rare minerals too. Yeah. Interesting secondary minerals here and not just the, the, the more common ones, you know. Like you see copper, you know, and you, the associated chrysocolla and malachite and maybe azurite, but, you know, then you add another like 10 more rare kind of secondary minerals and that's like what you have here at this place. Yep, I, we should probably go down here. I only got to half of the pit yesterday because there was so much to hold your attention. Hey, Raven, you want to go? Oh. Not bad. Yeah. Just kind of keep an eye out for all the discards of various rock hounds. Um, and you'll see what other people have been finding. And then you'll get an idea of, you know, not only what could be found here, but what wasn't good enough to keep. So, you know, if you see something that's cool, generally, if it's just sitting here like this, it's a discard. And there's better stuff around if you just look a little harder. Like this, this, uh, this might be at atomite. Although it does look a little druzy to be that, I'm not sure. But actually, yeah, I think it is because you can see like the splay of crystals there and that's kind of how that, that one forms. And I think a lot of that stuff was coming from this area yesterday, but I didn't uh, poke around much here. I'll show you where I was working yesterday in that big uh, area with all the quartz crystals, the big pocket. And then, you know, whatever's going on up here is like completely different with this dark black rock. That's where I got that, uh, that piece that you were... Oh, yeah. Last night. Wow, this stuff is just all over here. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, like I said, different kind of collecting compared to Topaz Mountain. Really just getting down and sifting through it all, looking through it all. You're not really doing much actual, you know, work, mining. You know, it's one of my discards from yesterday. Now, this is a piece 
Look at all the black coming off of that. This is what was inside the pocket. And then this is basically, if you imagine a big pocket, this is kind of like the outer, well, let's say the inner wall of the pocket with the crystals hanging off. So everything around this is like the host rock or whatever, the country rock. And then you see wow. how they, look at that. Oh, there's the other oh, side's wow. a little bit more attractive, huh? And then if you got a pocket like this where you're into this, you know, you can look under the dirt as well. You know, there's gonna One. be a pocket on both sides. You can see this pocket. I'll let you get around there and look at all those big crystals hanging off that. Um, on this side. Oh, on this yes. on this side in there, yeah. This is this is wow. the pocket. This is the same. Yeah. yeah, I dug up all this stuff that you see here. Wow. I pretty much excavated this boulder. Nice. <laughs> look at that. Wow. Well, that's somebody's discard, you know. So they just hid these in the bushes, huh? <laughs> yeah, stashed them for later, I guess, right? But you know, look at whole pockets of it. You can see the white a little bit better. The you know the crystal structure a little bit yeah. more here. Wow. The blue and this is an interesting one. You got Raven up there watching over us. We're going to uh, dig around in the area that Eric found a lot of this smoky quartz uh, formation. We're down at that spot and. Just to go over some of the tools I brought, I brought a rock hammer, of course, and the big screwdriver from that I used uh, to dig around in Topaz Mountain. And then I brought a shovel. This is uh, normally my uh, cat hole shovel when I'm out camping, but uh, today we're gonna use it to excavate some material around here. green boy this is a pretty colorful specimen it's got all this rust and red on it and then green all right I just broke that in half and there's more green so most of this material I'm pulling up in here is from uh, other people's discards but for uh, my first time out here, it's, uh, it's pretty cool looking stuff. This was one of uh, Eric's discards from yesterday. He uh, found some material that had some really nice green sections on it. Look at that. There's this little pocket here with all this kind of crystally formation. Lots of green. I'm getting into a lot of nice green formation in here. Look at all that. This here has some green and yellow in it. This piece here, that's got a whole bunch of different stuff in it. You can see though this material is really loose, it comes apart quite easily. Mm. And you'll get that stuff that'll happen from time to time. That's nice. So we're gonna move over onto this uh, black wall behind me. There's some pretty interesting looking rocks up here that we're gonna uh, Try and dig up to show everybody. I'm gonna have to say it's more of a metallic kind of yeah. rock, you know. I mean, it just it looks like a metal, yeah. you know, or not a metal per se, but a rock that has metal in it. This is where this kind of rock comes from. It's got these just really interesting contrasts. This rock seems more metallic feeling. In some of this formation, you'll get white quartz mixed within 
this other stuff. You can see the examples around over in here. But yeah, this area is just a really, really interesting conglomeration of uh, minerals and materials. Yeah, this ends up being way different. You move right over here and you get back into all the blues and the greens. Yeah, when you think about it, it's probably the contact zone in between the two, and that's generally right. where a lot of these minerals are going to form is in between two completely different kinds of rock yeah. where they have a chance to mix together. But you've got a mix of second, secondary copper minerals going on. Usually when you see those blues and greens, it's yeah. the blue is chrysocolla, the green is malachite. That's your typical. Here it might be a little bit different. There's probably more variety because of all the other secondary minerals. All of this here is calcite. You can see this big blocky oh, yeah. shape to it. Yeah. So this is all calcite. Been able to find some pretty cool minerals, but uh, we have a storm rolling in, a bunch of thunder and lightning. So we're gonna go down and try and find some place uh, out of the elements to hang out. It will probably pass by quickly, but we're not quite sure. We're gonna walk along the rim here over to some other mines and kind of check it out. The first boom lasted for a decade until its richest mines were worked out and the town was nearly abandoned. Then, during World War I, arsenic was badly needed and Gold Hill was just the location to find the mineral. The mines were reopened, new mills built, and by 1917, the Deep Creek Railroad was completed connecting Gold Hill to Wendover, Nevada. Then, when World War I ended, arsenic was no longer needed and the town died once again. And World War II reawakened the town due to its high demand of tungsten use in steel and electric filaments. Tons of the mineral was shipped out until the need slowed and Gold Hill dwindled once again. In 1940, the last train rails were torn up and sold for scrap metal. Then in 1946, the schoolhouse was shut down for the last time and the post office closed in 1949, adding Gold Hill to the list of Utah's ghost towns. So this is the top of the mountain that the mine we've been working in is on. And uh, we have a pretty nice view from here. This you can see behind me is the Great Salt Lake Desert. And uh, of course, those are some rainstorms moving over there. We had a little bit of rain, but we found shelter in a little cave and managed to stay out of uh, any precipitation. And it moved on. Gold Hill is definitely a place you should check out. It's got interesting mining history, great rock hounding, and lots of hiking and camping opportunities. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you would like to see more videos about hiking, camping, and exploring America's public lands, consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already, and you can join us next time for another adventure. So hopefully, we will see you guys then.